Malik Kenyatta Yakini, who is the founder and executive director of the Detroit Black Community Food Security Network. He views the good food revolution as part of the larger movement for freedom, justice, and equality, and is currently a fellow at the Institute for Agriculture and Trade Policy uh, as a food and community fellow. Good morning, how's everyone doing? Okay. Uh, I find it difficult to speak sitting down, so uh, forgive me because I'm very passionate about this work, and so it's much easier for me to speak standing up. Uh, I'd like to first bring you greetings from the city of Detroit, and I know you've all heard uh, various things about Detroit in the last few weeks. I'll try to shed some light on those things, but I always need to begin by giving honor to my ancestors uh, who, uh, upon whose backs much of the wealth of the Western Hemisphere was built. I'm um, bringing you greetings also from the Detroit Black Community Food Security Network, and although our name is, uh, food security is in our name, really what we're working for is food sovereignty. And in fact, when we began our organization in 2006, we weren't really familiar with the term food sovereignty. But we have since grown to understand that the work that we're doing is really much broader than food security. In fact, uh, in our estimation, the concepts of food security, food justice, and environmental stewardship are embedded in the concept of food sovereignty. I'd like to talk to you briefly about some of the things that are happening in Detroit in 2013 so that you can understand the context in which we're working. And like Blaine, I'm also not responding to the to the <laughs> <laughs> But hopefully you'll find some value in what I have to say. Uh, in Detroit, uh, we currently have a population of about 700,000 people, which is down considerably from about uh, 1,900,000 in 1950. The city has been considerably depopulated uh, both as a result of the decline of the automobile industry and as a result in the 1950s and 1960s of white flight and more recently of uh, black middle class flight. We have a massive unemployment which is estimated to be anywhere between 18 and 28 percent. There are no major national grocery store chains in the city of Detroit with the exception of recently Whole Foods opened which uh, clearly is not uh, a solution to food access for the majority <laughs> of Detroiters, but uh, is serving a particular segment of, this, of the city in the area that's being most highly gentrified. So that leaves the majority of the population to obtain their food from gas stations and convenience stores. Um, much of the so-called food that's sold in those stores are in styrofoam containers, boxes, and packages. The city is, the f geographic footprint of the city is about 143 square miles. Of that 143 square miles, about one third of the city is vacant. And again, for the reasons that I, I stated earlier, the depopulation of the city and also the uh, intentional uh, disinvestment in the city of Detroit. In fact, the reality is, and this isn't talked about a lot, is that Detroit and Detroiters are being spanked. And one of the reasons that we're being spanked is because of the 50-year uh, and, and beyond struggle for black empowerment in the city of Detroit. Mm -hmm. And so similarly to the nation of Haiti, which has been spanked uh, for being the first uh, nation in the Western Hemisphere to successfully uh, wage a revolution, uh, particularly by an African descendant population, the city of Detroit is also being spanked for having the nerve to stand up and to assert uh, our demand for empowerment. Um, that 143 uh, square miles equates to about 130,000 parcels which are vacant in the city of Detroit. About 60% of those parcels are owned by the city government itself. About 80% of the population is African American, and we live in a metropolitan area which is one of the most highly racial, racially polarized areas in the United States. As I mentioned, the city of Detroit now is as is uh, the case in many urban areas throughout Detroit being highly gentrified where we see uh, young white hipsters moving into the inner city, the core uh, of, the, of the city, and we see uh, longtime residents being displaced. All of this is happening against the backdrop of one of the most insidious uh, things which has happened in the United States, and that is that the elected officials of Detroit have essentially been disempowered mm -hmm by the appointment of an emergency manager by the governor of the state of Michigan. That emergency manager has powers that supersede 
the powers of all of the elected officials in the city of Detroit, so effectively the vote of the people of Detroit has been taken away. Even worse, uh, we find that uh, the more than 60 percent of the African American population in the state of Michigan finds itself in a similar situation where they live in cities which have also been uh, taken over by emergency managers. And I'm sure that you have all heard that uh, recently Detroit was the first major city in the United States to file for bankruptcy. So against this backdrop, our organization is working for community empowerment and to build resilience. And we do that in several ways. We're working in urban agriculture. We have the largest farm in the city of Detroit, D-Town Farm, which is a seven-acre model organic farm. We work on policy. We were the lead organization in creating the Detroit Food Policy Council. We have a youth program. And uh, one of our major projects now is the creation of a community-owned co-op grocery store. We're very concerned that the stores we do have in Detroit, and although we don't have major chains, major national chains, we do have about 70 to 80 independently owned grocery stores, which are primarily owned by an ethnic minority from Iraq called Chaldeans. And uh, we, we see a, a wealth extraction strategy where the money spent in those stores is not circulated within our communities to create empowerment, but is extracted from our communities and taken outside of Detroit to empower the communities that are surrounding us. And so we're very concerned about uh, changing that paradigm, and we think that the co-op model within the context of a capitalist system is probably the best uh, option that we have. Uh, we are also very concerned about creating democracy and not the kind of bourgeois democracy where you vote for heckle or jekyll, <laughs> but we're concerned about the, the type of democracy where people are actually making decisions that impact their own communities and their own lives. So within our organization, similar to Via Campesina, it's sometimes difficult to get a response because <laughs> we have this long, convoluted process where all voices have to weigh in. And it's not very efficient, but we think in the long run that it builds a sense of uh, capacity and community empowerment. Uh, the other big thing that we're fighting uh, for in Detroit is what we call land justice. Because of the massive amounts of land, vacant land in the city of Detroit, you can imagine that Detroit is ripe for land grabs. And many of you heard that last year there was a massive struggle in the city of Detroit around the proposal to sell 1,700 parcels to John Hans, a wealthy Detroiter. Uh, we mobilized many people in Detroit uh, who voiced their opposition to this in spite of this. The majority of the city council in December vo voted to sell him that land at eight cents per square foot. So we are struggling now to create just transparent policies in the city of Detroit for the sale and the use of public land. So finally, I'll end by saying that we are um, uh, fighting all of these struggles against the backdrop of these twin evils. Uh, the C word, uh, yes, I'll say it, Raj, capitalism and, <laughs> it, and white supremacy, which as Eric said yesterday, manifest not only within the dominant industrial food system, but also manifest within our food movement and within the food sovereignty movement. And so uh, we are concerned that we are all engaged in this work of uh, divesting ourselves of internalized uh, racial oppression. And in fact, it's not, uh, uh, it's not uh, auxiliary to the work, but as Eric said yesterday, this is the work. Thank you. <laughs>